Hi, today we're going to be learning about addition and subtraction with algebraic expressions. But first we need to learn about like terms. Like terms are terms that have exactly the same variables and exponents. The only thing that can be different with like terms is the coefficient. So if I have two terms like this, 3x squared y and 5x squared y, these are like terms. You can see that I've got the same variables and each of those variables has exactly the same exponent in both terms. So I've got x squared and I've got x squared. And I've got y and I've got y. So my variables and my exponents are the same. And remember the coefficients do not need to be the same. So these are like terms. Okay, now here's an example. I've got 2x squared y and I've got 2xy squared. Okay, now in this example, they both have x and they both have y, so they have the same variables, but in this one, x is squared and in this one, x is not squared. And in this one, y is not squared, but in this one, y is squared. So they are not the same, okay? It doesn't matter that the coefficients are the same, that doesn't make them like terms. So these are not like terms. Okay, so when in order for terms to, to be like terms, they have to have the exact same variables. They must have the same variables. And they must have the same exponents. And please note, over here, I had a square and a power of 1. And here I had a square and a power of 1. But because they were applied to different variables, the terms are not like terms. So these have to go together. The exponents that are the same have to be of the same variables. Okay, so in order for it to be like terms, I have to have the same variables and I have to have the same exponent of those variables. The coefficients are the only thing that, begin, that can be different when we're talking about like terms. Okay, so let's have some practice identifying like terms. So in this table over here, you have got a sample term in this column that you need to check all of these terms against and see if these are like terms with that or if they are unlike terms okay so let me just show you for the first one you're going to circle any that are like terms so I need to check for all of them I don't need to worry about my coefficients I'm just looking at the variables and the variables exponents so x with a power of 1 just x over here, I've got negative 9 and just x. So this one is a like term. So I'm going to circle it. Here I have negative x. Again, it's just x. So I have that is a like term. Now this one over here, it's just x, but then I also have y and I also have z. So because I have extra variables that do not match this term, this is not going to be a like term. Over here, I've got 6x. Again, it is just x, so that is going to be a like term. Here, I've got 7x cubed. Now, it is also x, but it's cubed, so it's not a like term. This one, I've got 3x squared. Again, it is also x, but it's squared, so it's not a like term. This one is 5x. It is just x, so it is a like term. Here, I've got negative 5xy squared. It is just x, the same as that, but I also have y squared, which is not part of that term. So this is not a like term. Over here I have xy. Again, it has this y that doesn't belong because it doesn't have it's not the same as that term. So it's not a like term. It's an unlike term. And then the last one I've got negative 2x that is a like term. So now I'm going to give you 
two minutes to complete the rest of this table where you have to identify out of all of the terms in each row which terms are like the first sample term in that row. Okay, so you have two minutes to complete that table. Okay, so let's see what you got for that table. So in the next one, I've got negative 4a squared. So I am looking for terms that have a squared and no other variables. Okay, so here's one that has a squared. Now, I don't care about the coefficient. Remember, the coefficients don't have to be the same. So I'm not even looking at that. I'm just looking at the variables. So this one has a squared and no other variables. Here, this one also is a like term. Here is a like term. This one is an unlike term because it has the b and the c as well. This one is an unlike term because it has the b as well. This one is an unlike term because it has the b squared. But here I've got one that is just a squared. Here, this is not at all the same. It doesn't have a squared, it just has a, and then it has also b and c. So that's an unlike term. This one is a like term as well because it has just a squared. And then this one is an unlike term because it has the just a and then it has b squared. Right, next one, we've got st that we're looking for. Okay, so now in this case over here, Remember, multiplication is commutative, which means that we, I can move things around, okay? So, so long as my terms have s and t, and they have the same variables in this case, or the same exponents, which is just 1 and 1, so it's not s squared or x cubed or anything like that, it's just s and t. So long as it has s and t in it, it is going to be a like term. So in this one over here, I've got 8ts. Now, it does have the correct s and t, it's just in a different order but it is still the same uh, variables and the same exponents. So it is a like term. Now, as I taught you, we try to always write our variables in alphabetical order, but sometimes they'll give us something like this to you just to confuse you. So you need to be aware that that is still a like term, even though the variables are in a different order. Okay, this is not a like term. This is not because it has the R added. This one is a like term. Same thing, the S and T are just switched around. Here I've got also s and t, they're in the right order. Here I've got s and t. Then here I've got s and t squared, so it's not the same. Here I've got s, t, u, so I've got the u added, so it's not the same. Then this one I've got s, t, so that one is a like term. Then I've got 9 m n squared, so I am focusing on the m n squared part of that. So long as it has m to the power of 1, or just m, and n squared, it's going to be a like term. It doesn't matter which order they're in though. Okay, so in the first one, I've got m and n squared. So that is a like term. Here, I've got m and n squared. So that is a like term. This one, I've got m squared and n squared is not a like term. 
This one is m and n squared, so it's a like term. Here I've got m, but I don't have n squared, I just have n, so it's not a like term. This one is m and n squared, so that's a like term. Here I've got m squared and n squared, so it's not a like term. Here I've got m squared and n, so it's not a like term. Here I've got m and n cubed, it's not a like term. And then this one, m and n squared, is a like term. And then the last row, I've got negative 2x or negative 2y cubed z squared. So I'm looking for terms that have y cubed and z squared in them. Okay? So over here, I've got y squared and z cubed. It's the wrong way around, so I can't use that. It's not a like term, it's an unlike term. Here I've got y cubed and z squared, so that is a like term. Here I've got y cubed and z squared, but I also have x squared, so it's not a like term. This one, I've got y cubed and z squared, so that is a like term. Here I've got y squared and z squared, so that's not like. Here I've got y cubed and z squared, so that is a like term. Here I've got y cubed and z squared, so it's also a like term. This one, I've got y cubed and z cubed, so that's an unlike term. Then I've got y cubed and z squared, that is a like term. And the last one, I've got y squared and z cubed, so that is an unlike term. Okay, so that's what you should have got for that whole table. Right, so now we're going to go on to what our goal actually was in this lesson, and that is to learn how to do addition and subtraction with algebraic expressions. Now the reason we had to learn about like terms is because you can only add and subtract like terms when you're working in algebra. Okay, so the coefficient of your uh, term tells you how many of the set of variables there are. So if I've got something like this, 5x, that's telling me that there are 5x's. This is the same as x plus x plus x plus x plus x. That means the same thing, okay? I've got 5x's. It's the same as if I had something like this. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 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 2, okay? This could also be written as 5 times 2. There are 2, I mean, there are 5 2's altogether, okay? So it's the same thing over here. This is 5 times x because there are 5 x's altogether. So the 5 tells me how many of these there are, okay? Or how many of these there are. So the number in front, the coefficient, tells me how many they are, and the variables tell me what they are. Okay, so in this case, they are x's. In this case over here, they are 2's. The 5 is telling me that there are 5 2's. Okay, here this 5 is telling me that there are 5 x's. Okay, so when we're working with addition and subtraction in algebra, we can only add the same things, the same types of things. Okay, so I can add x's, or I can add y's, or I can add x squareds, or I can add y squareds. x squared is not the same as x. We just learned that when we were doing our like terms. So if there are like terms, then we can add, and if there are not like terms, then we can't add, okay? And subtract. Okay, so now we're going to do an example. In this example, we have to simplify as far as possible. Now, the reason it says as far as possible is because we're not going to be necessarily able to combine everything into one term. Okay, so in this example, I've got 3x plus 2x minus 4y minus x plus 7y. Okay, so the first thing I need to do, with, if I get a, a question like this, is I need to identify my like terms, okay? So I'm going to go through, I'm going to identify, over here I've got x. So I need to see, are there any other terms that are like this term over here? Okay, so here I've got 3x, there I've got plus 2x, and here I've got minus x. Those are all like terms. Then... I've got over here minus 4y. This was an unlike term because the variable is different, okay? So the minus 4y is its own type of thing. And then I've got plus 7y. Now this is a like term with that. So those I can add together and these I can add together, but I can't, I won't be able to combine them all together because they are not all the same, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rearrange just to put things together so that it's easier for me to see what's going on. So I'm going to put all my x's first and then all my y's. We generally try and end up with things in alphabetical order, so that's why I'm doing it in that order. So I'm doing 3x plus 2x minus x. Remember, the sign is going to move with 
the x with the term. Okay, then I've got minus 4y plus 7y. Okay, so now these are all of my x's over here. And these are all of my y's over here. And now I need to simplify each of those sets of things. So first I'm going to simplify my x's. So I've got 3x plus 2x. So I've got 3x's and I've got 2x's. How many x's are they all together? There are 5x's all together. And then I take one of them away. So now there's only 4x's. So I've got 4x. So when we're, doing our multi uh, when we're doing our addition and subtraction, it works the same as normal addition and subtraction. You're going to add and subtract the numbers in front. Remember, if you can't see a number, it's a 1. So it's 3 plus 2 minus 1. So to get my x's over here, what I did is I went 3 plus 2 minus 1, and that gave me 4. So that's how I got this 4 over there. Then for my y's, I've got negative 4y plus 7y. Okay, so over here for my y's, I have negative 4 plus 7, and that gives me 3. So that's positive 3y. So that I got from over there. Okay, now you don't have to show this, okay? I was just showing that so that you can see what I'm doing. But when we are doing our addition and subtraction, you can only add or subtract like terms. So I can't now simplify any further because these, there are only two terms left and they are unlike. Okay, they are not like terms. So I can't add them to each other. So this is as far as I can go. So I am now done with that question. So the answer for that, the simplified version is 4x plus 3y. Okay, so now I'm going to give you something that you're going to try for yourself. Okay, so in this example, or in this activity, you've got four examples that you, four expressions that you're going to simplify. And I'm going to give you two minutes to work on simplifying these. Now remember, when you're doing it, you can only add or subtract like terms. Just be careful over here in C, 7y plus 9 plus 8y plus 5. The 9 and the 5 are going to be like terms. They don't have any variables. All constants are also like terms. So you just can add them like you would do with normal numbers. They are normal numbers. Okay, so you have two minutes to work on this activity. Okay, so let's see what you should have got for each of those questions. So for the first one, we have 5a plus 9a. Now, in this case, they are both a, okay? They both have the exact same variable and the exact same exponent. So I can just go ahead and, and add them. There are no other terms that have different 
exponents or variables. So I don't have to worry about sorting out. I can just go straight ahead and add. So there are 5 plus 9. So 5 plus 9 is 14. Okay, now if you think about this, pretend A stands for apple. Okay, so we've got 5 apples plus 9 apples. There are now 14 apples altogether. They didn't change into something else. They are still apples. Okay, so just like that over here, the A is still A. So it's going to be 14A. It doesn't become A squared or A cubed or anything like that because I'm adding them. It is still A. Okay, so 5 plus 9 is 14, and then the A stays the same. So when we are adding in algebra, then we add the numbers and the variables stay the same. Okay, now let's have a look at the next one. We've got 7x plus 8x minus 6x. Again, they all have the same variables. They are all like terms. So I can go ahead straight away and just add them. So I've got 7 plus 8 is 15 minus 6 is 9. So you should have got 9. And then again, the variables are going to stay the same. So it's, I have 7x's. I add 8x's and then I take 6x's away. How many x's am I left with? I'm left with 9x's and they didn't stop being x. They, they, st they are still x's, okay? So it's 9x. Next one, I've got 7y plus 9 plus 8y plus 5, okay? So now in this case, I don't have all like terms. So I need to identify my like terms. So my 7y and my plus 8y are like terms. And my plus 9 and plus 5 are like terms. Okay, so now I'm going to rearrange them so that they are uh, together. The like terms are together. I'm going to collect my like terms. So I have 7y plus 8y. Now you're not going to always have to do this. Okay, this is just to help you at the moment while you're getting used to it. Plus 9 plus 5. Okay, and now I'm going to add all of my y's. I've got 7 y's and I've got 8 y's. So how many y's do I have all together? 7 plus 8 is 15. They didn't change their nature. They didn't become something else. They still are y's. So it's 15 y. Okay. And then I've got plus 9 plus 5. Now these are just normal numbers that I'm just adding. So plus 9 plus 5 is going to be plus 14. And that's as far as I can go. I can't simplify that any further because those are not like terms. So I can't do anything else. And then the last question, we've got 4a plus 2a squared plus 4 plus a squared minus 8a minus 3a squared. Okay, so first of all, I've got a few different types of terms here. So let's look at our first term. It is 4a. Okay, so it's just got a like that. A squared is not the same as A, so it's not a like term. 4 doesn't even have an A, so it's not a like term. Then here I've got A squared again, so that's not going to be a like term with that one. Then I've got minus 8A, so that is a like term. So I've got 4A and minus 8A. And then I've got minus 3A squared, so it's not a like term again. Then this one over here, I've got plus 2A squared. Then I've got the 4 is a constant, it's not a like term plus a squared, and then my last term is minus 3a squared. So those are all like terms. And then finally, my plus 4 is the only constant. Okay, so now let's have a look at what order we're going to do this in. So I'm going to collect my like terms. Now, just like we, we always do alphabetical order if we can, we also... Uh, like we learned in the polynomial section, we were talking about standard form. The standard way of writing is in descending powers of whatever your main variable is. So, or in, in alphabetical order of your variables as well. So, I'm going to start off with the highest power of a, which is a squared. So, I'm going to put all of those ones first. So, my a squared, 2a squared. I don't need to write the plus first because it's positive. And if the first term is positive, I don't need to write that plus. I only have to write the sign if it's negative. Okay, so 2a squared plus a squared and then minus 3a squared. Okay, so those are all my a squareds. Then I'm going to go on to my a's. So I've got 4a, which is positive, so it's plus 4a and then minus 8a and then my constants, which in this case is just the plus 4. Okay, so now... 
my a squared are these ones over here my a's are these ones over here and my constant is just that one over there okay so now let's simplify so first we're going to look at the a squareds i've got two a squareds i add another a squared how many do i have all together i now have three a squareds and then i take away three a squared so how much is left there's none left okay so i don't need to write zero a squareds i can just leave it out the only time you would write zero is if everything has cancelled out and there is nothing else to write. Then you write a zero. Okay, but I'm still going to be dealing with the a's and the and the constant. So I'm not going to write a zero at this point. I would only write a zero if I get to the end and I still haven't written anything. Then I would write a zero. Okay, so 2a squared plus a squared minus 3a squared is zero. There is nothing left. Okay, I have zero a squareds left, which is just zero. Okay, so I don't need to write anything for that. Then I've got plus 4a minus 8a. So I've got 4 minus 8 is negative 4a. It still is a, even though I'm subtracting, the a's don't cancel out or anything like that. Remember, I, it's telling me how many there are. The, the coefficient is telling me how many there are. So I've got 4a's and I'm taking away 8a's, which is more than what I had. So I'm now in the negative of 4a's and I owe 4a's. Okay, so I have negative 4a, and then my constant is just going to be plus 4. It's not changing because it, there are no other terms that go with it. Okay, so you should have got negative 4a plus 4 for that one. Okay, now we are going to go to another example, where in this case, we have got some multiplication happening as well. So I've got the question 3a times 2b minus a times 9a minus 2b times 9a plus 2 times 5a squared plus 6b times b. Okay, now we already know from bed mass that multiplication has to be done first. Okay, so I'm going to go through and I'm going to sort out all that multiplication. Now we did learn a couple of lessons ago about doing multiplication with variables and, and so on. So remember when we're doing multiplication, we multiply our numbers together and we write that down first and then we're going to multiply our variables in alphabetical order. So I've got 3 times 2 is 6 and then A, there's no other A's, so it's just A, and then B. So 6AB, that's what I get for this first term over here. Okay. So I'm simplifying each term separately by doing the multiplication. Then I've got minus a times 9a. It's a negative times a positive, so it's going to be minus a times 9a. My 9 is going to be first, and then a times a is a squared. So I have 6ab minus 9a squared. Then I've got minus 2b times 9a. That's negative. 2 times 9 is 18. And then in alphabetical order, I've got a and then b. Next, I've got plus 2 times 5a squared, that's plus 10. And then there's no variable here, there's just an a squared over there, so it's just going to be 10a squared. And then the last one, I've got 6b times b, so that's going to be plus 6, and then b times b is b squared. Okay, so we start off by simplifying each term by doing the multiplication in that term, and then we're going to go and use what we were just doing in the examples uh, before now, we were going to be doing our addition and subtraction, first collecting our like terms, or identifying and then collecting our like terms. So I've got A, B over here. Okay, so I need to find any other A, Bs. This is A squared, it's not the same. This is A, B, so I've got minus 18 A, B. So A squared is not the same, and then B squared is not the same. Okay, then next I've got minus 9 A squared. So I'm looking now for a squareds. So here I've got plus 10 a squared and then b squared is different. And then over here I've got my plus 6 b squared. Okay, so now I'm going to collect them, um, collect all my like terms. Now remember I said we try to do it in standard form. So that means we're going to go in alphabetical order in descending powers. So I'm going to start with a with the highest power of a, which is a squared. So I'm going to do my a squareds first. So I've got minus 9 a squared plus 10a squared. 
Okay, then I'm going to go on to the next uh, the, the next uh, power of a, which is just a. So I have a, b. So I've got 6ab, so it's plus 6ab minus 18ab. And then finally, I've got uh, my b squared over here, plus 6b squared. And now I'm going to go and simplify my like terms. So here I've got my a squareds. Here I've got my a, b's. And here I've got my b squared. Okay, so first, my a squareds. Negative 9a squared plus 10a squared is the same as 10 minus 9. Okay, so 10 minus 9 is 1, so it's 1a squared. Now remember, if I've got 1 in front of variables, I don't need to write that one. So it's just going to be a squared. Okay, then I'm going to do my a, b's. So I've got 6ab minus 18ab. So 6 minus 18 is negative 12 and it still stays a b okay see over here the a squareds stayed a squared the a b's stay a b and then plus 6 b squared that doesn't change because there are no other b squareds that i'm going to add or subtract with it so that's what you should get for that example over there so when you get one like this where you have multiplication and division or things like that as well you first sort out the multiplication or division inside each term and then you go and use your like terms to simplify by doing the addition and subtraction Okay, so now I'm going to let you do some for yourself. So first, you're going to be doing four altogether, but I'm going to let you start off with these two. Okay, and I'm going to give you one minute to complete these two questions. Okay, so let's see what you got for those examples. So first we had 3a times a plus 8 times 2a. So in this example, we first need to multiply our 3a and our a. So that gives me 3 times 3 is 9a plus 8 times 2 is 16a. So I've got 9a plus 16a. They are like terms, so I can add them. 9 plus 16 is 25. And that is just telling me that I had 9 A's, I added 16 A's, now I have 25 A's. They are still A's, so it's 25 A. Okay, next we've got 4X plus 8X minus 1X. Four, time, or 4 times X is 4X. Plus 8 times X is 8X. Minus 1 times X is minus X. You don't need to write minus 1X, it's just minus X. And then we're going to simplify that. They are all like terms. So I can go straight ahead and I can uh, simplify it. 4 plus 8 is 12. So I have 12 x's and I take one of them away. So now I have 11 x's. So that's 11 x. Okay, so that's what you should have got for those two questions. Now you're going to do another one, question C. Which is a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to give you one minute to work on this question.
Okay, so let's see what you got for that question. So first, I've got my question, which is m times 3m plus 4n times 3m minus 2n squared times 4 minus 2 times 7mn plus 8n times n. So the first thing I need to do is I need to multiply within my term. So I've got m times 3m is 3m squared plus 4 times 3 is 12. And then I've got n and m. I'm going to put them in alphabetical order. So it's going to be m n. Minus 2 times 4 is 8. n squared. There are no other variables there. Then minus 2 times 4 is or 2 times 7 is 14. m n. And then plus 8. n times n is n squared. Okay, so now let's identify our like terms. So I've got over here 3m squared. And there are no other m squares. Then I've got over here plus 12mn and minus 14mn. Those are like terms. And then I've got minus 8n squared plus 8n squared. Those are like terms. Okay, so I'm going to start off in alphabetical order m comes first. So I want to start with m with its highest exponent. So this will be m squared. Now there is only one m squared term, so it's just going to be that m squared, and then I can go on to my mn. So I'm going to collect those. So I've got plus 12mn minus 14mn. Then I'm going to do my n squared. So I've got minus 8n squared plus 8n squared. Okay, so now I can go and simplify it. So I've got my m squared over there. I've got my mn's over here, and I've got my n squareds over here. Okay, so first my m squared. There's nothing that I need, there are no other m squared terms, so it's just going to stay as it is, it's not going to change. So it's going to stay 3m squared. Then I've got plus 12mn minus 14mn, so positive 12 minus 14 is negative 2 m n okay and then finally negative 8 n squared plus 8 n squared remember we learned when we did integers that if you have the same integer that's being subtracted and added then they actually cancel so i could straight away have done this those cancel each other out and i don't need to write anything over there because there's other stuff that's been written over there i don't need to write plus zero okay if there wasn't anything else if everything cancelled out then i would write zero but i don't need to Okay, and the last question that you're going to do is this one over here. So in this one, again, I'm going to give you one minute to complete this question. Okay, so let's go through that example. So in this question, we had 2f times 3e times f plus 3e squared times 4f minus 5e times 3ef minus 2e times 3f times 2f. Okay, so first, I'm going to go and do my multiplication. So this is my first term over here. It's all of that. So I need to multiply all of that together. So my numbers first, 2 times 3 is 6. Then in alphabetical order, E comes first, and there are no other E, so it's just going to be E. And then F times F is F squared. So that's my first term over there, 6E F squared. Then I have plus, 3 times 4 is 12, and E squared times F is just going to be E squared F. Next, 
we've got minus 5 times 3 is minus 15. E times E is E squared, and then F. And in the last term, I've got negative 2 times 3 times 2 is negative 12. And then E times F times F, E, and then F times F is F squared. So that's what you should have got when you just did the multiplication. Now we need to find out what our like terms are. Okay, so I've got E F squared. Here I've got E squared F and E squared F, and here I've got E F squared. So those are like terms, and these are like terms. So now we're going to collect the like terms. In alphabetical order, E comes first, so I want to start with a higher power of E first. So I'm going to have my E squared F first. So I've got 12 E squared F minus 15 E squared F. And then I'm going to put my E F squared next. So I've got 6 E F squared. So it's positive 6 E F squared minus 12 E F squared. Okay. And now I'm going to simplify those. So first, my e squared f's. I have 12 e squared f, and I subtract 15 e squared f, so that 12 minus 15 is negative 3 e squared f. And then over here, I've got 6 e f squared, and I'm subtracting 12 e f squared. So I have 6 minus 12 gives me negative 6 e f squared. So that's what you should have got for question D. And that's how we do addition and subtraction using like terms when we are uh, working in, with algebra. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.